Okay, so today we're going to make chainmail. I've had a few requests for it on how to do it. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it real quick. First off is you're going to need a coiling rod of some kind. Um, this is just a piece of 3 8 steel. Um, I've bent the head here a bit so I can take my wire, wrap it through and around the screwdriver, which is the handle, to turn. So basically all you're making is just a turning rod to actually turn to coil the steel up on. Or in this case, I'm using aluminum. So it's kind of hard to actually shoot this, but that's what it'll look like when you're done. You just coil it up. You just coil it up onto the rod. Um, real self-explanatory. It's just a turn the crank, there you go. Now, to clip the coils, to get the individual rings, what you're going to do is get it just as close as you can there, score it, but don't cut all the way through. Then grab the back side, bend and break it off. If you cut all the way through, it'll leave a sharp tip on either side that whenever you close the ring, it will allow, if these two closures come in direct contact, they can slip apart. You don't want that. So if you score and break it like that, it makes it a little harder to do that. So, I've got a few rings here already cut. So, and since this is aluminum wire, um, you can just use one pair of pliers. Really, you don't even need one pair, but I do just because they're pretty small. So. You take four rings and close them off real nice and tight, like that. So they line up. Then you take another ring, open it, add your four, and there you go. Now this will lay out in the armor like this. Okay, that's why it's called form one because you've got the center ring here and then four rings connecting to every central ring. So then to add to this, it's open a ring, add two, this one's going to close it all. Close it up. Make sure the two rings you added are closed properly. Like so. And there you go. And that's really all there is to it, guys. It's not that difficult. It is pretty time-consuming, obviously, but and then you're left with that. And you just continue working up to the sides however you want. You don't have to add three rings at once every time you do it. You can just add one ring and then you know do half rows in the way it's considered. Um, and then to weave it in, just yet again, it's still real simple. I mean, this isn't that tough to do, guys. So, that's really about it. Um, the only thing I'll say is the aluminum wire does leave. You can see kind of a blackening on the ends of my fingers. It's anodized aluminum. It'll leave that film every time you handle it. It washes off easily enough. But even wearing a piece of chain mail like this, it'll leave that, that a slight film if you don't have something underneath, if it comes in direct contact with skin. So... <coughs> that's the disadvantage to aluminum where also it can be torn apart if you put enough force on it versus steel um, and these are just butted rings this is very early style chain mail this isn't the later style chain mail you'll see where the ends have actually been flattened on an anvil and they lay up together and then there's a hole punched and it's riveted once it comes together I'll probably show you guys how to do some of that stuff much later on but aluminum is not a good format for it um, if you'd rather work with steel you can pick up 14 gauge is probably what I would recommend using is just a 14 gauge steel um, if you're using steel wire though 
these diagonal cutters don't really work too well, you'll want to get a pair of end nippers. And you can find those yet again. You can find them at Home Depot, Lowe's, any of your larger hardware stores, hoof nippers, any number of tools like that. Um, and otherwise, that's really it. There's no need to go into multiple scenarios of this. I mean, coiling the wire is just wrapping the wire tightly, like I showed you. So you get a coil that looks something like this. Um, it can be longer, it can be shorter, it doesn't really matter. Um, and just yet again, always remember to do the score and break. Don't just clip right through, because that'll allow it to come apart easier. And otherwise, that's how you do 4-in-1 chainmail. Um, we'll do some other videos here later on on how to make the coif, which is the actual headpiece, how to make, how to assemble the halberd, which is the full shirt, um, so you guys get an idea how to do that. So there you go. Okay, as promised, the halberd. Now here's how you do a halberd. You open one ring, set it off. Six rings, closed. Three, four, five, and six. Add your six rings to the center ring. Close it off. Now, go through and interweave one into two off the center ring. And then lay up the next ring so it looks like this. And add another ring. And you just keep doing this all the way around. Now once you get to the very last one, it's kind of a pain because it's going to want to start to curl on you, which we're getting there now. So we've got that one, and as you can tell, it all kind of falls in like that. Okay, so there you have the first round of the quaff, which actually I messed it up. Imagine that. Let's fix this here. To there. Okay, so then you can take this and lay it down, and it'll look something like this. Now what you're going to do is you're going to add a ring here. You're going to add a ring here, here, all the way around. So you're going to have double the amount of rings coming around this. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. 